Yeah, it's a punchy little box, so let's take a look inside. Hey there, the folks at Geekom are sponsoring this video to talk about the Air 12 Mini and what it's like using an ultra low power PC as a home machine. I think in tech reviewing, we can get a little fixated on the most exotic or expensive machines. And sometimes we can lose sight of what might make for a good home experience. The unboxing here is really nice. It's an inexpensive system, but no one wants to feel like they're getting something cheap. Our box opens up to a nice presentation of the Air 12 on a tray, foam padding and wrapped up nice and clean. Under that tray, we get a nice little thank you card. And that's where we're gonna find the power supply. The Air 12 is not power hungry and this little brick is all we need. Geekom also includes an HDMI cable and a VESA bracket. Even on one of the lower priced options, we still want this to be ready to go out of the box. If this is gonna be bolted on to a monitor or a TV, you're gonna want all the parts in the box to be able to do that. Our mini PCs come in more feature complete than a lot of our laptops will now. Front face with a USB-A and a USB-C and a cute little headset jack, a little security lock on the right side, a full-sized SD card reader, on the left side and that rear is nicely stocked full-sized hdmi supports 4k video while mini display port and the rear usb-c support 8k video out you can go really high resolution or this could be a low priced way to get a triple 4k monitor setup a pair of them blue usb 3s and a gigabit ethernet our internal antennas support wi-fi 6 and bluetooth 5.2 for even more flexibility now cracking this box open Geekom makes a nice little system. We want inexpensive, we don't want cheap. Four feet and screws in those feet open up the bottom plate and we can take a look at the expandable memory and storage. This is a lower power system with only one slot for RAM, but that is upgradable. I was kind of surprised to see a stick of crucial memory in there. That's kind of nice. The Wad Posit SSD has been a solid performer and 512 gigs of storage should be decent in this price range. And digging a little deeper, some nice little details in the construction here. The metal frame around the components is a lot more durable. Similarly, the feet screws bolted into the bottom plate, so you're not going to lose them when you pop them out. I'm not trying to make this a comparison. It's a sponsored video, so I'm not trying to trash other brands, but we can point out a few spots where some manufacturers might save cash in assembling their systems, and some details might get glossed over, like bottom screws hidden under adhesive feet. I really don't like that. Or an entirely plastic on plastic shell with a peel off top. I also don't love that. We can push prices lower and lower, but sometimes this isn't inexpensive. It's just kind of cheap. Back to the Geekum, other little touches like pads on components and ports to help prevent pieces on the motherboard getting bent in operation or damaged. Those pads also help this system meet EMC and ESD certification requirements reducing potential issues with electromagnetic interference or static discharge. As I mentioned, the system specifically is a lower power box and we're not going to grade it on high performance operations, but even in daily use, we still want a good, efficient cooling solution. I like seeing how much copper is back here. The fan is nice and large. That's both better for moving air through the system and for the quality of noise the Air 12's gonna make. Again, in a comparison, another system with this chip might be fine with a smaller fan, but even touches like tape to direct airflow help in overall system longevity. Even an inexpensive system, we might hope it can be a little home desktop or a headless media server, and we'd want it to run for a long time. It might make it look a little more complicated, but because of the metal frame and the durability around these parts, it actually makes the disassembly a little more sure-footed. And as I was putting everything back together, it's also nice to see how the antennas were arranged around the frame of the Air 12 instead of just 
taped to a plastic part of the shell. There are numerous different reasons why someone might want a lower power PC, and some might think that this kind of build is overkill. Maybe some people don't want to pay for that, but there are definite differences in build quality that some people might want to spend up to get. The R12 is just a nicely assembled machine with good component choices and arranged in a way that competes very well against higher price solutions that I've played with in the past. It's real little, it's real light, it would be easy to pop it in a backpack or a small bag. I'm not saying a mini PC needs to be super durable for travel, but you might want it to be able to handle some bumps and bruises, a little daily lifestyle abuse. It's something you might want to consider spending a little more. I love small form factor PCs, especially when I'm traveling. I've worked a lot of trade shows where uh, sometimes you need to set up a little workspace in a hotel room and pros and cons over a laptop, but a mini PC can bring a lot of flexibility if you don't need the setup to be battery powered. Now, shifting over, focusing on some home use, I've been pleasantly surprised. The Intel N150 chip in here is not new and it is not at the top or even the middle of Intel's lineup. But what's marketed as low performance and low power today is still plenty capable for daily compute tasks. It wasn't that long ago that I would review a little Celeron machine and the experience would be a bit punishing. The N150 is used in my daughter's school laptop. It's still showing up in network attached storage solutions. It's a little older chip, but it was built to handle simpler workloads and it does that very well. And we have to think of the family PC or a student PC. It might be low frills, but it gets the job done well enough that you don't hate using it, surfing the web, and with enough RAM that you can have more than three tabs open in Chrome. Most of my daughter's schoolwork is done on Google Cloud Services. I'm just proud of her that she's writing these short stories in OpenOffice because she noticed her teachers haven't figured out how to view those files. You really don't need a lot of horsepower when you're mostly leveraging web services. Now, document stuff can be a little tricky to talk about. Someone might hear me say it's good for handling documents and spreadsheets, and then they'll complain that their custom Excel workbook with a decade of data and complex formulas, well, it just takes so long to load up and calculate. So yes, firing up an office solution works well, but the more intense the workload is in the document or spreadsheet, Obviously, a box like this might struggle a bit more. But happily, the entertainment stuff is decently well handled, at least punching above its price tag. It's no strain at all playing my high quality Blu-ray MKV rips in VLC, that's done on the box. And also, streaming 4K, that's not much of a strain either. Those fancy Wi-Fi antennas doing a real good job there. So much so that doing some game streaming through Game Pass that worked a trick. Older Celerons would struggle with that. It was always really disappointing. The Air 12 did fine. There's no way this box could natively play Doom the Dark Ages, but here we are. It's no issue over Wi-Fi. Brief tangent. I really thought the Xbox Series S was going to be a Trojan horse for game streaming. Sure, you could buy the more expensive Series X and get better fidelity. Oh, that Series S just can't put out the same quality, but if you had a decent data connection, you could match the quality of the Series X if you streamed that game through Game Pass and xCloud. I really thought that was going to show up more directly in marketing. We obviously still have significant issues with broadband adoption across the country, but aren't we getting to a point where we could more confidently recommend a mini PC for folks with good data? If you have a reliable enough connection that Netflix 4K streaming rarely throttles down in quality, you probably have enough bandwidth to stream a game through Game Pass or GeForce Now. You could put a box like this behind your TV and it would cost less than a console and do a lot more than a streaming stick. So let me hear down in the comments if you think that idea has legs now. Let's chat potential and are you currently running a PC behind your TV? But I digress again. Back to the Air 12. It's not going to be a gaming solution on its own. It can play less demanding titles, but honestly, 
a mid-ranger phone is going to run vampire survivors better than this machine might. But it could be a fun option to tinker with if you emulate old console and arcade titles, playing less demanding indie games. It's plenty powerful for that. And the work side of this is going to sound similar. Small business solutions, connecting to a company's shared server, being used as a terminal. It's a fast way to set up and bolt on a little chunk of compute power. It probably won't be the main PC in an office or a household, but it's good at solving a lot of issues where another computer might be needed. Before taking on this sponsored video, I've run several Geek On machines in our house. Right now I have kind of a funky setup with my NAS. My QNAP does not support hardware transcoding. So if someone is watching a movie through Plex and they don't have a great data connection, the QNAP CPU is maxed out, converting a stream down to lower quality. I use that QNAP for my work too. And it's really good at just sending out multiple 4K video streams. It's terrible at converting a 4K stream into a 720p stream. So I moved Plex to a little mini PC, another Geekom, and I tell it to pull the data from the QNAP, but the mini PC handles all the converting and transcoding. That way my QNAP never gets bogged down. These systems are really fun to use as little headless media servers. And I'm looking to add more responsibilities to that little box too, photo management, document backups. We might add security cameras or maybe a family chat platform. I've traded out a few systems, trying out different options for a good media server, but the current Geekom we're using now, I've had in operation for over a year with almost no downtime. It's been a nice, stable, reliable little box. But if there are any issues, Geekom includes a three-year warranty on all of their products. The Air 12 is a modest solution in many regards, but it's the kind of computer you can trust to handle those daily compute tasks. And it's nice to know it'll barely register on your electricity bill. Now, I think in tech review land, we like to focus on the most expensive and exotic solutions because those get us the most traffic. I don't think we always do a great job of listening to what someone needs and recommending a solution for those needs. I recently reviewed another mini PC that was under $300 and I got comments telling me, well, it would be better for people. I should recommend they buy a more powerful mini PC that was only a hundred dollars more and that would be better for future proofing and and more powerful for gaming and if someone came to me and said hey my budget's about two hundred dollars i think that would be kind of a jerk move and we play that feature creep and fomo game in a lot of our reviews well well only fifty dollars more here and just it's just another 70 bucks there and by the end of that, we're talking about a completely different kind of option. I just feel if we did a better job listening and educating, fewer consumers would get stuck in this cycle of overbuying and overcompensating. We could actually fit the right solution to their needs. But I've certainly digressed again. As we wrap this video up, I just want to reiterate, even when we're working with a lower budget, there might be reasons to shop a little higher. It's easy to buy a computer with a chip at the lowest possible price for that chip. But always shopping like that can be more expensive in the long run. If it's a little more expensive to start, but it lasts you longer and it's nicer to use, then you're more likely to save cash in the long run and you'll enjoy the experience more. Geekom is selling the Air 12 as a way to cover those computing basics. And it is nicely built to do just that. It's not the least expensive price for these components, but it's also not the cheapest build quality. Gotta throw that shout out to Geekom for sponsoring this video, having this conversation on my channel. I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on Geekom gear and maybe shop one of these systems for yourself. It's some fun stuff. You can treat yourself. I won't tell anyone. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel, smashing the bell icons. I love getting to dig into these systems and play with different solutions. And the folks 
who get to see the results of my testing and reviewing first are of course my amazing patrons. In addition to the few sponsored videos I do on this channel, this list of names scrolling by on your screen right now, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart, as these are the folks that are helping to keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab. I really hope you'll check them out. I hope you'll consider joining the community at patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Now, you know where you can find me across the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy basically everywhere, but these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little on the blue skis, and a lot less so on the Facebooks, the threads, the Instagrams, and none at all on that dumpster fire site, and I will catch you all on the next video.